with some very frustrating aspects of dealing with insurance providers, be it residential or commercial. So what I'd like to invite you guys to do is actually maybe ask me some of the questions that you guys are coming up against. Maybe you don't understand why. Maybe some of the resistance that people like myself actually put on you guys, either no matter which level you're buying at. And hopefully I can provide a little bit of insight on that. Rick, maybe I can ask you a question as yeah. well, since you have there. Uh, I am not a fan of surprises, and I'm the first one to admit my limitations of knowledge. So I'm not here to BS you. I'm not here to give you answers I don't know. Ask me a question. I need you to write it down. When we meet on Wednesday, what I'll do is uh, I'll have a chance to talk to Ken, and we'll go there, and I will get back to each and every one of you with the responses to your individual questions. If you guys want to give me your business cards or contact information after that. So, please, I invite you to pick me up. Some of you were nodding as I, I said have that. So. Have a Why, uh, when I go to get insurance on my house, uh, pay 150000 to pick a price. So I go to get insurance on it, and I got to get insurance for 250000 on it. Okay. And a lot of my clients, they, they don't they understand, understand that. Valuation. They say, you know, so. There's three sets of price points you're going to come across, or probably even four actually. Uh, there's your retail purchase price, you're going to come across your appraisal, which the government's going to use that for your tax purposes, and then you're going to come across what we call rebuild costs from the insurance point of view. Every company you deal with is going to have their own internal calculator on what they estimate a rebuild is going to cost, and what they break down to a dollar per square foot. That's for replacement costs. Replacement costs. Each company is now, if you're dealing with somebody reputable or just a company that should be backing you, it is a little harder to get this on an investment aspect, but if you can get it, push and probe your advisors for it, look for guaranteed replacement cost. It protects you a little bit better. What happens is... What do you mean by guaranteed? I'll do that in one second. Uh, what ends up happening is they estimate the dollar by the square footage, how many bathrooms, are there any uh, special features about the home, is there crown molding, you know, spiral staircases, we ask a lot of in-depth questions. And then what we do is we put it all in the calculator and we split out a price. Normally, I'm going to tell you right now, you're right, it's $100,000 to $200,000 more than what you're paying for the home. It makes no sense at all. What they're doing is they're evaluating the risk. Okay, so every one of them are going to use different sources of information, post or post being one of the most important ones. If you're anywhere in a post or post area that has recently been subject to a lot of claims, two years ago, the Hildegard area, Okay. They all had sewer backup claims due to the faulty piping and everything that was done around the city. And so. Most of the houses in that area now either don't qualify for are denied sewer backup coverage, or their prices are increased to reflect the cost that the insurance companies are taking on a higher risk if they're going to insure that. If your postal code is, uh, again, different companies have different specs, but anywhere from 8 to 13 kilometers outside of Fireball. Your response time to put in a fire is going to be less likely to happen. So we're going to build in a higher value per square foot because it's more likely they're going to have to pay them more money by the time you get there. Uh, fire hydrants kind of falls into the same thing. It's a little bit closer, usually about 300 to 500 meters. Uh, but what they end up doing is when a construction company goes in and answers and rebuilds all the claims in a certain area, it's business. They provide a quote that guarantee the insurance companies are going to have to pay them. Prices get inflated. That's what happens. It's part of life. That's business. That unfortunately gets passed into the customers at one point or another, either from the commercial aspect or the residential, and it ends up being a higher rebuild cost because maybe the house next to you or three blocks over is a three hundred thousand dollar mansion, but you're sitting, you know, three hundred thousand dollar mansion. Okay. Um, uh. But you're sitting in a home that's ninety nine to one hundred thirty five thousand. Your rebuild costs, just because of the area you're in, especially if there are a few places that have been subject to claims and the rebuilds have been inflated by the contractors, your costs are going to be higher. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but it is a part of it. A lot of them are based on unionized labor workers, okay? so they have specific contracts with specific companies, which they know that they have to pay them. Same as an auto insurance. They all try and negotiate rates, and they guarantee so much business, and in turn, they're given some sort of a benefit for doing with them. Uh, then it goes into cost of lumber. So right now, with all the mills closing in the Brunswick area, I mean, most of the lumber that's coming in is being shipped. Mm -hmm. A lot of rates are going up on that. Uh, there's a few different things that are taken into consideration, but basically, if you're looking at overall labor, supplies, debris removal, you end up paying almost three times what you think you're going to pay for it. And it's a really hard thing to explain to somebody buying a home, paying $129,000, which includes the land, 
then we're insuring your house at 300000 It's just all of the factors that are taken into account. Uh, that being said, going back to the original point there, guaranteed replacement cost versus replacement cost. If you insure your house, or you get your house insured with replacement cost at $150,000, after everything is said and done, if the building is not complete at $150,000, the insurance company says my hands are done, the rest is on me. If you want it built, you build it. Guaranteed replacement costs means the insurance companies take on a little bit more of a risk. We guarantee that at the end of the day, the house is going to be rebuilt the way it was. So if it costs us $400,000, but we only insured it at three, that's on us. So that's the difference between that, which is one of the things you want to push for. It is a little bit harder to get in the commercial market. You're going to have to shop for things like that. Um, you might want to be weary as well, depending on the brokers you're dealing with. In New Brunswick, there are some ways you can, we call it uh, under-insuring, really. Um, their calculator may say it's $250,000 to rebuild. You say, well, no, 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 I can easily get that done for 195 I only paid 185 I know I'm in good hands. So they're going to say, okay, so they're going to insure you at 80%. Once that happens, um, it's not a lot of business that I get into, but you end up in a lot of court cases, a lot of things like that. You're completely underinsured. There's a lot more onus on you for what you're going to be responsible for before the insurance company is going to kick anything out. And a lot of them will operate in what they call specified perils, not at all perils, which basically means it's not going to be full coverage, it's going to be certain coverages depending on how they happen under specific conditions.